welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 451. I'm your host, Roman Sanzo. This week, we have some news for you. And yeah, let's get right into it. Oh, boys. So, first news is... Uh, them Fighting Hurt is a finalist for the Game of the Year by Dice Awards. So, let's see. Um, apparently, the world... <clears throat> world's only who fighting game is making waves around the fighting game circuit. Dame Fighting Hurts has made it to the finals in the annual Dice Awards for 2020, up against Mortal Kombat, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, and UFC 4. Uh, will it put out in the end? Here's hoping. The others do seem a little generic. <coughs> oh wow, Steph. That, them, them, them fighting words. <coughs> so, let, let's see. Um, okay, well, well, in the fighting category, there's that. But let's just see the dice awards for a bit. Because um, from what I saw, it's pretty fascinating. And what was that? <coughs> no. Uh, okay, we got for the 24th Annual Dice Awards finalists. Outstanding Achievement in Animation, Final Fantasy VII Remake, The Last of Us Part Two, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ori and the Blind, sorry, Ori and the Whips of the, the <laughs> Ori and the Will of the Whips, and Spit Spire Spy, Oh, hmm. Spy Father? Oh, I don't know how to say that one. So, um, it's basically just a bunch of games getting nominated getting their um, day in the spotlight and whatnot. And yeah, um, honestly speaking, looking at some of the things over here or the finalists, they're pretty interesting. I'm not going to say who I'm uh, voting for or who I like to win and whatnot, but some of the games here are okay and some of them are being overplayed. Uh, outstanding achievement in art direction. Hades looks good. Ghost of Tsushima, like I mentioned before, I've been playing a lot of Ghost of Tsushima and that game looks really good. Uh, outstanding achievement in characters. Uh, yeah. Original music composition. <coughs> composition, sorry. Uh, achievement in audio design. Achievement in story. Okay. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of 13 sentinels and that game is genius like in all honesty um 13 sentinels should win flat out i mean uh ghost of Tsushima is good and whatnot but it doesn't have that impact that 13 sentinels have so in hades is one of those games that is a dungeon crawler or not really dungeon crawler uh it what was a um roguelike kind of game where you play over and over and over again and if I'm not mistaken uh, every death is considered canon and whatnot so yeah um hey this is good but 13 sentinels is one of those games where I can't tell you about what it is okay I can't tell you what the game is but I can't tell you the story because it's one of those games where you have to play to understand <clears throat> so yeah, thirty sentinels should win. <clears throat> Technology, uh, technical achievements. Yeah, oh. <laughs> uh, this one is one of those games where, or this one of those categories where, what do you mean? Because flight simulator looks good in terms of its full tech. Like if you get a powerful rig to run it, and if you get uh, everything. Like if I'm not mistaken. The game is based on the wed the actual weather of the location that you're going to and whatnot. And uh, Mario Kart Live, that's even though that it, even though it's a gimmick kind of game, but the tech of controlling your game or controlling your cart with a Switch controller, that is something else too. I mean, all, all these are really awesome in their respective categories. Game of the year, actually, game of the year, by the way, yes. Oof. This is one of those things where I don't know. Um, Spider-Man should be good. Hades should be good too. Doom Eternal is good. 
So, I don't know. Adventure game of the year. Uh, I, I say ghost. Ghost is awesome. And what? Family game of the year. Uh, fighting game. O- obviously, then fighting her is gonna win. <laughs> Biasness. And racing game. Ah, not much. So, role playing game of the year. Mm, Cyberpunk, eh? Cyberpunk is one of those games where it didn't came out. Well, it, it just came out. And people are taunting it, uh, or pro- um, telling or just saying that it should be game of the year for RPGs. But are they not noticing the problems that came with it? I mean, when you're talking about game of the year candidate, shouldn't it be overall in terms of performance, uh, story and whatnot? I mean, the game is riddled with bugs. So how could it... I don't know. From what I know, uh, Final Fantasy is awesome. Yakuza, like a dragon, also awesome. So, yeah, I mean, between those two, I guess. Sports game. Sports ball. Yeah, Tony Hawk. Yeah, I'm just going to put my bets in Tony Hawk. Strategy and simulation. Not a... No, no. I, I don't know. Uh, immersive reality. Okay, yeah. Mario Kart should win because it's technically... You're driving in your home, something like that? Yeah, that could be cool. Uh, immersive reality, I don't know. Indie game, Hades should win. Uh, mobile game of the year, ugh. Uh, online game of the year, mm, I don't know. Tetris probably? I don't know. Uh, outstanding achievement in game design. Yeah, this is a hard one. Outstanding achievement in game direction. Oh man. I don't know. Game of the year. <coughs> so, game of the year for 2020. Um, hmm. I don't know. Um, I, I think Ghost, because I'm a bit biased, because I play the game a lot. But Final Fantasy is a good one too. Hades is also a good one too. And a lot of people do enjoy uh, Animal Crossing. So yeah, between these four, I don't mind. Oh, you're probably wondering about this game. Uh, th- that one game. Yeah, it th- th- don't need no more, what you call this, acknowledgement. It won what? A bunch of stuff in the, um, whatever that happened. Yeah, th- th- that can just go. But, yeah, getting back on ponies. My goodness. Uh, let's see. Yes. <sighs> to be honest, Them Fighting Hurt is kind of great. Uh, it came out officially last year, but before that, it has been going slowly. Um, uh, I got the, I, I backed the game, so I got a chance to play it. Uh, and the game is awesome. And as time goes on, they keep updating the game, updating the game, making the game better and better. And this is just a bunch of guys who made fight, uh, fighting is magic. Just a, a fan game just for fun. Um, because, well, they like playing games and whatnot. And got CND by Hasbro. And from that point on, they decide to let's go do our own thing and let's get Lauren involved with the character design. And from that point on, they're just doing great. And, if they do win this, getting nominated is also another awesome thing. But just if they win this, they're going to be like happy. They're just going to be nuts, like really, really happy about this. And they do deserve it. The indie group that um, started small just goes. Like, yeah, they do deserve the win. So other than that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Those are my thoughts. And let's see. <clears throat> Kid screen article reveals new details, setting, lore, and more. Okay. <clears throat> what this official wrote. Oh no, Calpain. All right. 
uh, it would appear we are finally getting a little more info about the future of ponies other than what we, sorry, uh, what uh, other than we know the film coming out later this year is going to be done in CGI style. For a while, we have wondered what sort of world to expect, what sort of characters, and if there would be much lower help over from M uh, FIM. Uh, if what this article say is true, it is rather encouraging. <clears throat> so, uh, okay, I'm just going to, well, read what the summarize say and just tell you what I read. Okay, you know, I'm just going to try and read. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, um, this is taken from the kids screen uh, article and okay, what it says is, with the movie, we started development and made the decision to expand on the world of My Little Pony rather than starting from scratch with a totally brand reinvention, Thompson say. We found ourselves with the whole, uh, sorry, we found ourselves with this whole decade of storytelling and rich lore and it left, it, uh, sorry, and it felt wrong to walk away from all of that. So, from what I'm seeing here is that they're not dumping G4, but uh, taking elements, lore, from G4 and carrying it forward. So, you could say that G5 is just G4.5.1, something like that. It's like a continuation of the story that has already exists. So, what I'm guessing, and this is just my speculation, is that 10, 20 years in the future, we're going to get uh, new characters. And I do hope that we get a bunch of mixed characters instead of ponies. Because, uh, like I mentioned before, they're starting a new, but not really dumping what they already have. So, if we could get, like, Ponies, Hippogriff, Griffins, Changelings, Yak, and whatnot. I mean, basically, quote-unquote, the student six. But, you know, mix it. Like, maybe you got, what, three boys, three girls, and just start out that new uh, world with uh, a new fresh of eyes. Because uh, having six uh, pro uh, female protagonists is cool and whatnot, but... In this kind of show, it's nice to have that balance of um, male perspective, or sorry, male point of view and female point of view to see how they tackle a certain issue. So, yeah, I do say that <clears throat> working with what you have and carrying it forward is awesome. So, yeah, um, kudos there. Let, let's carry on. <clears throat> Instead of abandoning Abandoning the franchise, character, and stories, the movie will take place in the same world featured in Friendship is Magic and Pony Life. Oh god, that last part there. Oy. You guys know how I feel about that one. But anyway, uh, but jump ahead in time to focus on a new generation of ponies and explore uh, and, and sorry, ponies and unexplored corners of Equestria. This creates opportunity to include nods to the property's previous iteration. Uh, e, mm, iteration. <laughs> okay. Oh my. Iteration both in upcoming content and consumer product offerings. So, like I mentioned before, jumping in ahead, uh, kind of a time, uh, time leap and whatnot. A fast forward, if you say, and just telling the story from another fresh of another point of view, fresh eyes and whatnot. Uh, I equate this to the Boruto effect, where after Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, you have the offsprings of the char main characters doing uh, what they do, or just carrying on the story from their point of view. Uh, you could also carry this over with. Uh, Anime, like anime usually likes to do this kind of things because, 
when you mentioned Dragon Ball, like, okay, Goku from 1980-something is, the, is still the same Goku as, and versus, sorry, versus now, is still the same character, but he matured and grew, grew up. But if you were talking about Western kind of media, like Spider-Man, uh, the S- Spider-Man is just going to be Spider-Man. Uh, they're just going to reboot it in terms of time. The story's still going to be the same and whatnot. Maybe a few tweaks here and there. But overall, you're still going to have the same story being told over and over again. With a few tweaks here and there. <clears throat> but from what I'm, <clears throat> but from what I'm deciphering here is that, like I mentioned before, going forward in time to tell a new story. They say ponies, so probably it's just going to be six ponies and maybe going to be six female characters. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would like to have that dynamic, like what the student six are having. But if they have to, well, use the same, or if they have to use six female leads, I don't mind. I don't mind. But I, I do wonder, like, are we going to get the two to two? which is two unicorns, two pegasi, and two earth ponies? Or can we have, like... Okay, um, Hasbro, if you're listening to this, and probably I'm a bit too late with this, but uh, if you're listening, I would like to have a more dynamic range of species. Because if we are going to have magic-based characters, uh, why don't have a unicorn and a Kirin? Or uh, unicorn and changelings, but Kirins are popular, so you, you have that dynamic there for magic. I, I do think I, I'm not 100 sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Kirins are magical, probably. Hmm? Who knows? Hmm. But Kirins are what part dragon and hmm. That is that is hmm. You know what? I'm not 100 sure on that one, but. Kirins are popular. Do 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 <laughs> do consider them. And if you're going to go on the other end, uh, for flyers, a pony and probably a changeling or uh, Pegasus Griffin Griffins. Yes, Griffins. Griffins are good. We we don't have much Griffins representation, so that will be awesome. And as for the Earth ponies, um, Earth pony and Yak probably. Or maybe they should go to the Kirin. Oh, yeah, man. Those those are interesting. Okay, so alternate character, uh, alternate species would be Changelings, Kirins, and Griffins. Yeah, this three. This three are cool. Like, you guys should probably think about that one. Like, yeah. Uh, don't, don't need to cite me or anything. If you do use the idea good on you, I'll be watching the show. <clears throat> and like I mentioned before, they are going to use whatever is previous, just carry forward. And since the show doesn't really revolve around the lead characters, we might get certain callbacks. Like, okay, uh, let's just say Discord is going to be around and Fluttershy too. So we can have John DeLancey and probably um, Andrea Lehman on for a bit. And... Andrea's probably going to be there from the start. Maybe she'll voice a new character, whatnot. And yeah, John, John is going to be there because this is mainline pony. So yay. So yeah, uh, they, it's going to be a lot of fun there. <laughs> okay, let's see. <clears throat> if you're, if you're brand new to the franchise, I think it will grab you and pull you in, says Thompson. And existing fans are going to pick, uh, are going to be Picking out Easter eggs for months and years to come. Okay, this is cool. This statement here is cool because... Okay, the first part is one of those things where... Yeah, the show is good. So, if you're new to it, you're gonna... Uh, be, you're gonna enjoy watching the show and whatnot. But the Easter egg part there... Like, trust me. When you know a show and when you look at something and you just watch... You're gonna be really entertained by 
those slight uh, those call out those Easter eggs like oh look behind there oh th- that's Lyra and Bonbon they're hanging out and one oh there's Vinyl and Octavia and so on I mean those kind of things we the fans really love if you're new to the show got no idea but notice um, Equestria Daily posts something out or Twitter or even the Biburu. so this is going to be one of those things where oh what is this I want to know oh I should probably watch G four from the start and to know what's going on yay so this is one of those things where yes this is something really really positive going on so i am happy for this <clears throat> all right uh there is also some indication of the direction that hasbro wants to take the series wanting it to be more inclusive as well as providing some details about the main characters highlights that they are in sorry uh, that that they are an active uh, um okay the introduction of new gen um, the introduction of new characters and a departure from design featured in friendship is magic and pony life is intended to shift the brand's focus to more modern theme like diversity Diverse, <laughs> like diversitizing, <laughs> diverse. Mm, I cannot read that one. What is wrong with me for today? Diversitize, mm, diversitize and inclusion. The movie's main character, for example, is an active working to mm, activist, activist to make the pony world a better. Okay, uh, I'm going to try and search for the word. Activist. Activist, okay. So, yeah, activist. Mm. Right, that is... That is really interesting. Okay, let me break it down. <clears throat> um, Yes, uh, the new introduction... Uh, sorry, the introduction of new characters and a departure from design. Th- that's what, th- what they're saying is that Okay, um, remember G4 and Pony Life? We're going to try something new. We're going to try something new. We're going to make something new. But with... They didn't say 3D here. But in previous news, uh, in investor calls and whatnot, they did mention that it's going to be in 3D. And 3D is one of those things where it's expensive to start. But once you get the models they are just going to pay for themselves kind of thing <clears throat> sorry uh so i got no idea how the design is going to look like we got no idea i'm sure we're not going to get a uh, source filmmaker style ponies so we'll see how it goes i do hope that it's not too jarring that it kicks me out from the show and then, uh, the line introducing, <clears throat> intended to shift brand's focus to more modern themes like, uh, diversity and inclusion. So, what they're saying is, we want to make money, and we're going to try and grab a lot of attention. So, we got to change the character for that reason. But at the same time, too, uh, this, since this is going to be something new, so we're going to try and do something new. In all honesty, if G4, <laughs> I'm a bit biased with this, uh, the G4 style works. The G4 style looks awesome. I like it. Uh, it's clean. It's streamlined. But that is flash. But at the same time too, it goes to the same model where if you got the, uh, template, if you got the design, it pays for itself in the long run. But I'm sure that they're going to try something new with dynamic camera angles, interesting views, uh, camera angles and whatnot. So having it in 3D is much more easier. But yeah, uh, that's besides the point. <clears throat> uh, let's see, movie characters... So the movie's main character, for example, is an activist working to make the pony world bet- a better place. 
That line there is very concerning because since they're carrying over the what you call it stories from G four, that means Princess Twilight Sparkle is a thing. What? <laughs> how, how, what made Twilight screw up that there's an activist? See, this is one of those things where there's an activist? What? What happened? I mean, activism is not a bad word. It's just that it <clears throat> it, it, uh, it strikes up change. It invokes um, progressiveness and whatnot. I mean, it just wants the... Uh, how do I put this? It just feels like Something is wrong and we need to make it right. And in My Little Pony after Twilight, what's going on? But, 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 uh, here's the thing. If you remember in the season 9 ending, uh, there's stained glass windows. And in those stained glass windows, we have uh, the heroes. Like, okay, uh, you, you got the heroes like Princess Celestia and Luna banishing... Discord, and then you got the main six, uh, banishing or this defeating Princess uh, Nightmare Moon to free Princess Luna. And then you have what, uh, Flurry Heart doing something, and then, uh, the main, the, the, the student six, and so on. So, uh, you have that there as quote unquote history. So, since this is going to be retelling the story from a future point, we got no idea if it's after the season 9 ending or before, or it's in the middle, like season 10, then going to season, let's say, uh, 11 probably, I don't know. <clears throat> but we'll see. Uh, it's one of those cases where I find it very fascinating. And then... Uh, there are some other tidbits in the article about the direction of the toys and such, but this seems to be just the juiciest tidbit info. Okay, yeah. And yeah, with new show, new toys, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, I've been breaking down the thing with you guys and sharing what I think and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, this here is really juicy. Like, I, I want to say that from what we are getting here is pretty positive. But we got no idea how the designs are going to look like because they haven't really shared anything with us. Uh, one of the few interesting tidbits I found that I really, that you guys should really, uh, keep an eye out is the activist part. Like, why? <laughs> That, that's going to be a game changer in the future. Other than that, um, I, I guess the, uh, the wording for what? Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's something to do with inclusion. Uh, both of them. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, diversity and inclusion. So what does that mean? Who knows? There's a lot to think about. But yeah, uh, we'll see. Uh, we, we're going to get the movie first. And from the Equestria Daily Counter here, it's going to come in 235 days. That's Going to be a long while. No, really. 2021. Hmm. But, well, when that bridge come, we'll cross it. So, uh, that's the news for this week. So, uh, yes, let's move on to the next topic. And uh, next topic is what have I been doing for my week? So, it, I mentioned it last week, but yes, uh, I've been playing a game. And said game is called Dark Souls 3. And yes, Dark Souls 3 came out in 2016. That is like four, 
five years away. Was it four? I don't know. So anyway, uh, it's a pretty old game. But I just thought on a whim, I want to replay it because it's fun. And yes, it is fun. It is interesting that I felt it was difficult, yet easy at the same time because I know the game and it should be easy. At some parts, yes. At some part, no. Uh, it kicked my ass real good. So yeah, um, Dark Souls 3 is an awesome game. Uh, other than that, I haven't been doing anything with Magic the Gathering because, well, I am waiting for the new set to come out. Yes, the pre-con came out this week, so that's awesome. But I do really want to play with the... Sorry, no, um, the pre-release came out, yes. But no, I, I want the Commander decks and my local LGS said that local uh, this LL I mean uh, the LGS that I go to mentioned that they haven't received their stock yet so I need to wait one more week so yeah I'm just gonna wait for a bit so other than that um oh uh, I watched Carmen San Diego season 4 and I think it's finished and overall it is a fun show it is a fun and educational show, and I think you guys at home should go watch it. It's on the Netflix. I'm not 100% sure if all seasons are there, but yes, it's one of those shows that is very educational and fun. Yes. So, besides that, uh, I got nothing for you guys. Um, I, I'm, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to think what's there to highlight besides the show that I've been watching and the games I've been playing. That's about it, really. Um, nothing more to it than that. So, anywho, let's wrap things up. I've been babbling for a while now. <clears throat> oh no, that's the that's the thing I need. No, no, this one. Uh boys. Okay, anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nmshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. If you'd like to support the sh- No, sorry. And also please subscribe radios on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also stitch your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PlanetOfLife.com. Links will be in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there you'll catch me and Totera reviewing the Pony episodes and comics and also specials. Sometimes we like to do other things than ponies. And those are animes, cartoons, comics, and games. Yes, those those things have our interest too. And if you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. Yes, and, else, <laughs> and also a huge thank you from me. Wow, I am so off my game today. Uh, talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Leg, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys later with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya!